Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb. Come fly with AOPA. Well, this past weekend on November 12th, tragedy rocked the aviation community when a Bell P-63 King Cobra and a B-17 Flying Fortress Texas Raiders collided mid-air during the 2022 Commemorative Air Force Wings Over Dallas World War II Air Show. Thankfully, nobody on the ground was injured. However, all six people on board the aircraft were killed. Craig Hutain was flying the P-63, and then the crew members of the B-17 were Terry Barker, Kevin K-5 Michaels, Dan Reagan, Leonard Lynn Root, and Curtis Rowe. Now, AOPA Sierra Harrop had the honor a few years ago of flying with several of the crew members on Texas Raiders, and you can see some footage of that here. Well, AOPA Air Safety Institute Senior Vice President Richard McSpadden has produced an early analysis on this accident, and what he does is he pulls on his expertise of air show operations from his time as commander and leader of the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. Let's take an early look at the mid-air collision between a B-17 and a P-63 King Cobra at Dallas Executive Airport, the home of the commemorative Air Force. As we can see from the video, as the airplanes come around from a left to right pass in front of the crowd, the P-63 collides with the B-17 and both airplanes crash inside the field boundary. It appears the NTSB will very quickly determine that the aircraft were airworthy and that this was not a factor in this accident. Looking very closely at it, the mishap occurs due to some kind of show line encroachment. A show line is basically a parallel line that runs parallel to the crowd and enables the crowd to look out and observe the flight activity. It appears, based on the video that we can piece together, that the B-17s had an inner show line a little bit closer to the crowd and the fighter aircraft had a farther show line a little bit farther from the crowd. And that's part of the way that they were establishing deconfliction. In this case, this accident appears like one of the airplanes is off their show line. From the video we can see, it appears like it's the P-63. The clues for that are, if we look at one of the videos, we can see that there are fighters flying in a track in front of the P-63. There's a couple what appear to be P-51s, and the P-63 is number three in that trail. As the two P-51s come by, we can see that they're in a relatively straight line right behind one another, and they're well inside the B-17. This appears to be the show line for the fighter track. When we look at the video, the P-63 extends outside of that show line or inside towards the crowd as it's coming uh, in its turn for its lap around show center. It, extend, it loosens that turn. It's on the inside of the turn. And right before impact, we can see the P-63 extend its bank or bank up a little more aggressively. And it appears that what's very likely is the P-63 is focused on the P-51 ahead of it realizes that it's overshot its show line and is correcting back. Another indication that the B-17 seems on its track or close to its show line is ADS-B tracks. And based on previous tracks that we can see, it appears that the B-17 is flying relatively similar, similar show line that it was in previous tracks. So this seems to indicate that the B-17 is on its show line, on its brief flight path, and it's the P-63 that uh, encroached on the B-17's show line. Another factor in this accident is the poor visibility in the P-63. The P-63, being a World War II vintage fighter, has a long nose, and visibility over the nose and inside a relatively cramped cockpit is difficult. And so the P-63 is in an extended bank turn as it gets near the B-17, and in that turn, it's coming just slightly high to low. So with its wings up in a slightly high to low kind of uh, flight path, the, B6, the B-17, as big as it is, would have been completely blind to the P-63. This is one of the lessons learned that all pilots can take from this mishap. Those extended banks, you must roll out periodically, no less than every 90 degrees, to check your belly check the belly side or the side that your air, the path that your airplane is about to roll out on to make sure there's no traffic there, no towers there, no any kind of obstruction, and there's no traffic that's about to take the same piece of sky you are.
Another human factor that will need to be looked at is the condition of the pilot as he flew the air show. How was his fatigue level? How was his nutrition level? He was an airline captain, so what was his schedule leading up to the flight that day? How often did he fly that day? How late in the day was it? So some of these factors, like fatigue, can be looked at. Factors like proficiency, how frequently had he flown this profile? And how recently had he flown the P-63 and flown one of these type of parades that was on display that day? Recency and frequency will be things I'm sure the NTSB and the Commemorative Air Force will look at to see if the pilot was ready and trained to fly in the parade that he was flying. It's important to remember that we don't have all the information on this accident. The NTSB won't be releasing a preliminary report for four to six weeks, and it actually will be 12 to 18 months before a probable cause is issued. Now, the NTSB has asked that if anyone who was at the air show or in the area has photos or videos of the accident, that they send it to them by email. That email address for you is witness at ntsb.gov. And I just want to express our sincere condolences at AOPA for all of those who have been impacted by this accident, especially to the family members and friends of these men, and also to the extended family of the Commemorative Air Force. Well, we had other sad news on November 12th as well. Frank Robinson, he was 92. He was the legendary designer and head of Robinson Helicopter Company. He died at his home in California. And it all started with his vision for small personal helicopters and that has led to generations of pilots learning how to fly helicopters and the R-22 continues to be the most popular training helicopter in the world. Well now let's turn to two young guys who are buying, flying, and flipping that's refurbishing and selling airplanes. Hey guys, my name is Jeff. You might know me from my YouTube channel, JR Garage and JR Aviation. And my name is Owen, uh, also known as Flying with Owen on all socials. And uh, behind us is our new to us 1988 F33 Bonanza. These guys are killing it. Buying planes, fixing them up, flying them around, and then selling them for a profit. They document everything on social media. So the whole idea of flipping planes actually kind of branched off the idea of flipping cars. So my brother and I, uh, our YouTube channel, JR Garage, documents our life of buying and selling a ton of different cars, regular cars, sports cars, super cars, you know, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, anything you can imagine, we've about done it all. So the next step was, of course, uh, planes. And why not? There's a bit of a learning curve and a few more zeros than with cars. Our first purchase, my brother and I uh, found this good deal on a Sears SR20, or at least what we thought was a good deal. It ultimately ended up being a good deal, but uh, unfortunately, pretty quick, it needed an engine overhaul. So that was a ton of money. Um, but uh, with the market you know, going nuts the past couple of years, we actually still ended up making a nice profit on that plane despite having to drop $50,000 on an engine kind of unexpectedly. The guys are having a blast and letting the rest of us live vicariously through their posts. This is, yeah, kind of turned into a full operation. Five airplanes now and successful flips and so far we haven't struck out yet. We've been really lucky with some of our deals, did some gambles and uh -huh, here we are. Nikki Britton, AOPA pilot. Well, AOPA content producer Nikki Britton, you might recognize her from Lightning Round on our YouTube channel and Instagram account. She recently caught up with Owen and Jeff. So, Nikki, how did you meet up with them? I know you've got a car connection, you're a car person, but you're also in aviation. How, how'd you meet? Well, actually, I met Owen many years ago um, during a Young Eagles Day here at my local airport. Okay. Um, my dad and I were uh, volunteering, giving helicopter rides, and it may have been Owen's first ride in a helicopter, but I can't be sure. Uh, but they were actually keeping the Bonanza a few hangers down and uh, contacted me about using the 182 for an air-to-air -air shoot to show off their new paint job. And uh, that's how I met Jeff and kind of how this whole thing got started and we decided to, uh, to do a story about it. Oh, neat. So what's their secret? Are they AMPs? Are they doing most of the refurbishing work themselves or do they work with different shops? 
So they work with different shops, and because of their uh, their large social media followings, a lot of times that helps them kind of you know meet other companies and get things at a discounted rate, you know, in exchange for for some advertising. I know that they they're working with Avidine right now to to finish up their. Um, their their new panel um, so they work with a lot of different shops a lot of times they buy these airplanes sight unseen at auctions so sometimes they'll send out an amp friend um, sometimes you know uh jeff's brother christian will go out and check it out he's very mechanically inclined um, or they'll bring out owen and, and owen is the only pilot of the group right now um, but uh, jeff and christian do uh, look forward to achieving their pilot certificates at some time in the near future so you know it's kind of a team effort and uh you know, with all of the, uh, the the people that they know, they're just able to kind of get this get this stuff going. It's really cool. All right. Well, hey, good luck, Owen and Jeff, on your uh, plane flip in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this isn't the sure this isn't the last plane we'll see from them. All right, I'm sure. Thanks, Nikki. Well, if you're more interested in flying than flipping. Now's a good time. According to the Future and Active Pilots Association, the 12 major airlines are hiring now more than ever. So far this year, they've hired 11,000 pilots, and they expect to reach 13,500 by the end of the year. And demand is there for sure. AOPA is doing its part through its You Can Fly High School Aviation STEM curriculum. And earlier this week, we actually hosted over 400 educators in Memphis, Tennessee for our high school symposium to provide networking and mixing with other professionals and inspiration for those who are using our curriculum. Well, here's an exciting first flight announcement. The first kit-built Bearhawk Aircraft Model 5 made its maiden flight on November 7th. The test aircraft had a 300 horsepower Lycoming IO540 engine and a three blade Hartzell propeller. The quick build kit starts at $70,000 and you can read more about it at the link below in our description. Well, if you're like me and you like to fly, land, and go explore places without the involvement of any other people, then a folding bike could be the perfect accessory. I have two of them myself, but the problem is that a lot of them don't fold compactly enough to actually fit in the airplane. And if I have my rear seat installed in the 170, I can't take those bikes uh, folded with me. But I recently got to test out the Brompton Sea line Utility Folding Bike. It's really compact, it stays locked in place when you fold it, and I can fit it in my baggage compartment with the seat still in. Let's take a look. I flew from Ohio to Frederick, Maryland, back to AOP headquarters to work in the office. And I used that opportunity to test the Brompton Line Utility folding bike. So it's the C-Line Utility and it weighs just 26 pounds. So the big pluses of this bike are that it's very compact. This Brompton has really been thought through well, so it stays locked and you can lift it by the mainframe or the seat, turn it and maneuver it easily. I can get it in the airplane with the rear seat installed. My folding bike, I have to uninstall the rear seat in order to get it in and take it places. So just goes to show how nice and compact this Brompton one is. So I rode it from AOPA's headquarters at the Frederick Municipal Airport to Beef and Buns in Paradise. It's a burger and ice cream shop that's one of my favorites near the airport. It's 1.2 miles away, so it's an easy ride. You can stay on sidewalks. So the folding bike, it has three speeds, fenders, it has smooth tires. It's great for riding on sidewalks, roads, or paved bike trails. The three speeds on this are fine for going short distances. But if you're going to go more than a couple miles, you might want one of their versions that has six speeds. So I only found a couple of minuses about this bike. This one does not have a kickstand, and that's the biggest thing I have with it is because you have to hold the bike up or lay it down. I also wish that the handlebar height was adjustable. I like that about mine. But overall, for leisure riding, something nearby an airport, I'd say within two miles over flat terrain, it's, it's perfect even with these three speeds. So this folding bike starts at $1,630. They have a whole range of products, so you can go to their website, check out ones that have more speed, uh, they actually have bikes that are even lighter than 26 pounds, but the price does go up considerably for that. I would say the weight 
the compactness and the way that it stays locked while it's folded are definitely the biggest advantages for using it when traveling with an airplane. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Fly with AOPA. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all our aviation videos. This week, we leave you with footage of flying over Lake Powell from viewer Jorgen Nies. He said he flies his Piper Pacer once every year from Winchester, Virginia to the west for some backcountry flying. And in September, he flew it over Arizona. Be sure to send in your favorite flying videos at the link in the description. You just might see them on an upcoming show. And as always, if you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love for you to join us. Click the link at the end of the video to learn more. See you next week.